Good morning all, um, it's a great privilege for me to share my journey and I hope that I can inspire you to believe that there's still light at the end of the tunnel. I want to start by acknowledging one of the key role players in my life. Trisha has said and what she has done, she inspires me and sets an example for me. Sylvia Earle said, the diversity of life on earth is generally astonishing, but despite those large numbers, it's also important to recognize that every species, in one way or another, is vulnerable to extinction. And in our time on Earth, our impact on the diversity of life has been profound. Let's be honest, the list of challenges that mankind are currently facing is longer than what we want to believe. Climate change, loss of biodiversity, extinction of species are only a few to mention. In May 2019, The Guardian published statistics of crises the world population are currently facing. The one that stood out the most was the fact that there is a direct proportionality between exponential growth in the population and the amount of food needed. Obviously, the more people, the more people need to be, get food and eat. The increase of food requirement is direct proportional to the amount of produce required. I quote, the report shows a planet in which the human footprint is so large that there's little space for anything else. Three quarters of the land has been turned into fields, covered by concrete, swallowed up by reservoirs and otherwise significantly altered. Two thirds of the marine environment has also been changed by fish farms, shipping routes, subsea mines and other projects. Three quarters of rivers and lakes are also used for crop and livestock cultivation. As a result, more than 500 species have insignificant habitats for long-term survival. Many are on the course of disappearing. Agriculture and fisheries are the primary causes of these problems. Food production has increased dramatically since the 1970s. This fed global population by generating jobs and also economic growth. But this has come at a high cost. The meat industry, for example, has particularly a heavy impact. Gazing from cattle account more than 25% of the world's ice free land and more than 18% of the global greenhouse emission. Crop production uses 12% of the land and creates less than 7% of the emission. My passion for marine life lit a fire in me to make a change in others' lives. Winter. The dolphin story led to countless hours of marine research scrolling through pictures of the ocean. The most bewildering discovery I made was that the end of commercial fishing is predicted long before the middle of the 21st century. The first thought that raised through my mind was, are fish going to be extinct? As a 12 year old girl, all my attention was shifted to saving the fish species. Soon after this bewilderment, I was so determined to save the earth and its natural resources that farming with fish was no longer an option, but essential. I received my first thousand tilapias in January 2014, and this was just the beginning of so much more. I learned many les lessons and cried many tears, sometimes still crying tears, but saving the earth is going to take much more dedication and perseverance from me and um, the youth of South Africa. Lapierre's aqua started as a two dam system and grew into an aquaponic system where the facility is mainly supported filtration system, cleaning and maintaining optimum water quality, supporting the tilapia in the growed area. The entire facility consists out of 750 square meters. The simplest definition of aquaponics is the combination of fish, plants and bacteria in a combined system. Due to the high amounts of water solid discard, I developed a system called the decoupled aquaponics system as an additional filter system. All water exiting the system can now be reused because all hazardous toxins has been removed. In this particular system, we plant 22 different crops and um, varied of season. In 2017, we produced 
just more than 2.42 tons of vegetables on an average crop rate of about 220 gram per package. Now, if we say a rough calculation, that's about 11,000 packets of crops, like a Lewis packet, 11,000. By strategically capitalizing on opportunities, a peer aquaculture system developed in 2017. This consists of fish only. The production of this facility was about six tons of tilapia in 2017. The next phase was to build a hatchery to keep the system stock. At the beginning of 2018, two universities accredited La Pies Aqua as a research facility and living lab. Our focus shifted from production to more research. Currently, we are less production driven and focus on generating big data for research purposes. The other three businesses forming part of my enterprise. Aquaponics Direct is the main outlet and selling point of aquaculture and aquaponically produced produce, as well as a little bit of equipment. This is also a platform to educate the general public about this fast growing industry. Also, Claria Sun Enterprises. This is specifically a catfish hatchery. The hatchery is still in its developing phases and will be full, in full production at the end of 2020. Thirdly, we have Feeding Africa Unlimited. Feeding Africa Unlimited is focused on providing alternative food production solutions to people worldwide. To address worldwide problems, we need solutions. Solutions like aquaponics, rooftop gardening, rehabilitation, recycling, and the list goes on and on and on. I quote from a publication on, the global agriculture, on global agriculture. One third of the economically active population obtains its livelihood from agriculture. In Asia and Africa, millions of small scale and subsistence farmers like fishermen and indigenous people produced most of the food consumed worldwide. In most cases on very small plots of land. Over the past decades, agricultural policies and international institutions, as well as private and public agricultural research, have often considered small-scale and subsistent farmers as phase-out models of a pre-industrial form of production. If we look further into agricultural activities, women are the main farmers. In Africa and large parts of Asia, women in rural areas bear the main responsibility of looking after children and elderly. They also consist of most of the agricultural labor force in small scale and subsistence farmers. Since official statistics do not capture unpaid work, be it in the garden or in the field or in the household, there insufficiently represents women's actual share in agriculture. The agricultural sector will have to increase food production by 70% to meet the demand of feed the world population will need in the year 2050. Climate change presents a high risk to food security, especially in sub-Sahara countries. This we need sustainable farming and water management systems. Let's go back to the 12-year-old girl with a dream to feed Africa. The solution had to be feasible, sustainable and scalable. This is a small aquaponic system called the Lapi system. In developing countries, this, small scale, this is a small-scale solution. It can play a critical role in food security and control of climate change. Involving individuals, families, businesses and small communities, small-scale aquaponics or aquaculture units are com components of urban and pre-urban agriculture initiative, particularly, particularly with non-government or government organizations and other stakeholders in urban food and nutritional environments. Small-scale aquaponic units is also sustainable food production units to boost families in rural, area com com rural communities and township areas. In 2017, my dream to feed Africa inspired me to develop this system, especially as a starting point for anyone irrespective of skill and to be able to do aquaponics and produce food. The Lapi system consists out of three grow beds and one dam which contains the fish fits in a footprint of nine square meters. And if managed correctly, you'll be able to harvest 120 crops every fourth week and two fish per week. A system like this can support a household between four to six people on a constant basis, providing protein and fresh vegetables. So how does it work? 
Aquaponics is a symbiotic system where fish and plants grow together. The dam is filled with the water and the fish are placed in the dam. Due to the excrete produced by the fish, the water will at some point or another start to get toxic. That's why you have to clean the water and put it through a filtration system. Now, that's exactly where the plants come in. The grow beds are filled with 19 mm granite rock, which create a surface area for good bacteria to grow on. The water is pumped from the um, dam to the grow beds, where all the nasty stuff <laughs> is converted into to usable nutri nutrients for the plants, um, which is now directly planted in the rocks. Yes, you heard right. The plants grow in rocks. There's no soil in the system. The plants grow lavishly and receive continuous nutrients, and in the process, they also clean the water. The clean water goes back to the fish, where the fish loves the new water and fresh oxygen, which is their basic need for growth. Aquaponics uses a noticeable small amount of water to grow the plants and therefore contributes to sustainable farming because you, use, you reuse the same water over and over. I support the global focus in developing sustainable food production solutions with the future of our planet at heart. You can grow leafy greens like lettuce, spring onion, even fruit bearing crops like tomatoes, cucumbers, melons and peppers or even herbs in your aquaponics garden. This system is ideal for private residents, rural areas, schools, NGOs, retirement villages, mine communities, and or township communities, and the list goes just on and on. By rolling out the LAPIS system, we automatically reserve our natural resources. Growing your own fish will result in an increase in natural fish populations. Through optimizing space in your backyard for production of your own fresh greens, you generate a smaller carbon footprint eco-friendly, on an old principle with new technology, all joined together. The following criteria was used to develop this system. To make it work in Africa, it must be small, modular and easy to erect and set up, irrespective of the skill level. It must be easily maintained, robust and durable. It must be easily available and the need to know how to operate it. It must improve food sustainability and must be self-sufficient. While researching and developing the LAPI system, I realized that two things was missing, data and record keeping and smart technology. We've developed an app to address these problems. The system is easily scalable and less labor intensive than con conventional farming. Popular beliefs go that the bigger the better, but I believe equipping communities and with systems like the LAPIs, we employ people and teach them new skills. In commercial systems, you replace people with technology because it reduces risk. The LAPI system carries small enough risk and is distributed equally amongst individuals. The agriculture and aquaponics based facility addresses two challenges that we're current, currently discussing points. Producing high quality healthy food on a small scale. As proven by Dr. Nick Savidov from Canada, Aquaponic growth rates exceed hydroponic plant growth rates, rates up to four times with some vegetables and herbs. A variety of about 300 crops can be planted in an aquaponic system. Isn't aquaponics just the solution to optimum production on a small scale? A few, a few advantages. Faster growth rate to market size crops, constant production throughout the whole year, saving water, fewer diseases and field crops, and you can see the list just goes on. Just three disadvantages. Management must have a good working skill and knowledge with fish and plants. Pathogen treat treatment or op options are limited due to the potential negatives on other crops. It's a relatively new industry, so much more research is still required. To conclude, we need to act now. The next few points, I believe, can help anybody to create their own sustainable way. Identify the resource under pressure. Keep in mind, rehabilitation, restoration, and conservation. Be creative to formulate a solution. Join forces. Um, implement the solution and the main um, project to benefit the resource. I would like to end with another quote of Sylvia Earle. Do everything good or bad starts because somebody did something or didn't do something. This was my story. Please write your own, and you have the ability to make a difference. Thank you.